Hey there everybody, what's up? Kevin here from the My Song of the Day Rock 2000 to Today YouTube channel. And I've been at this for about two years and I've seen and heard so many emerging bands in the rock and metal scene today. And now it's time to count down my top five favorite in that scene of emerging bands. Before we get started, please follow my song of the day, Rock 2000 Day, on social media places like Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You'll get the 30 second song of the day feature on every single social media platform where it's a great place to get to know many new bands, fall in love with new kinds of music and rock and metal and all that great stuff. You also find out anytime anything gets released on those places, so be sure to follow them. Instagram is our most popular platform. We're really easy to connect with on Instagram. We ask you a lot of questions. We also have IGTV videos every single Tuesday night, which is a behind the scenes look at what we're doing here. And every single Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Central, we have our Instagram live streams. An hour you come talk to us, have a great time, and just talk whatever. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel so you get these videos, the top five specials, the Kevin Figures Out videos, which is me trying to figure out if I like certain bands or not, album reviews, band reviews, top 10 lists, year-end awards, whatever it might be, every single Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Central, that's when they're released. And this is where the Core Progression Podcast also lives with the YouTube videos. So the Core Progression Podcast is our very own podcast where we're interviewing all these emerging bands in the scene, an in-depth interview, a lot more free form, so you get to know them on a more personal level with their music and with some fun stories as well. You can watch all the interviews here on YouTube, or you can listen on Spotify for podcasts and Google Play. Link to the description below for everything, but now let's get on to the show. When I first started the My Song Day Rock 2000 to Today project, I wanted to grow rock and metal music within the community and within the world today by doing a lot of things with bands that are popular, but also wanted to show off emerging bands as well to help them gain some fans and to help shine some light on how good their music is and allow people to get bragging rights by saying, hey, I followed that band back when they were really small and now they're going to be this huge band and I've been in there since day one. So also helping out with bragging rights. Small Band Saturday started out in 2019 and that's kind of where some of this traction picked up because I was exposed to many of these emerging bands in the scene and I thought, you know what, this is a great way to get to know about them. And then with the Core Progression Podcast, I started interviewing a good amount of these and then I started picking up on others as well and discovering a bunch of others through that process. So that's kind of how I got entrenched into this all. I've heard so many of these bands, gotten to know so many of these bands, and really got to go in deep with their music, not only on the podcast, but through Small Band Saturday as well. So I thought now's a perfect time, two years into this, to make a top five list of how great I think some of these bands are and give you my top five favorite. A couple of criteria on this. One is as of July 24th, I will have the screenshots for this, their Spotify monthly listener account must be between 1,000 and 100,000 monthly listeners. Reason for that is because I want to have a little bit more of a, you know, a little bit more of a base there to go off of with listenership. The other criteria is you cannot be an Italian metalcore band. The specific reason why I put that one in there is because last month I made a video detailing why Italian metalcore was so good. So if you think that ba bands like Sam the Canvas I and Eli should have been on here. Yes, I totally agree. However, they had their own separate video, so I don't want to double up on them and talk about them twice. So you can go and watch that one to figure out why I like Sam the Canvas, Eline, Deep as Ocean, Dead Like Juliet, and Median. And now, let's get on to it, shall we? Counting down, starting at number five, I have the New York punk band Rebelmatic. I found out about them back in June of 2020 when an alt press article came across my way and I saw this punk band out of New York City with a new song called Insult to Injury and I thought, you know, let's go take a look at it, let's listen to it, let's see what we got. And I was really blown away by it and I took a look at some of their other music and I was really blown away by it as well. I ended up contacting them to see they get on the Core Progression podcast. We had a little bit of a trouble with dates and with um, some fun kind of things because the first time we tried, Creature, his uh, phone was not connecting audio very well, so we pushed it back two weeks and the second time we luckily were able to get everything in and done before his phone overheated and exploded. So I'm glad we got that going on, but now I'll jump into why I like this band. So why do I like Rebelmatic and why do I like their sound? Because you know me, I really like that punk rock, hardcore punk sound, and they do have that at their base. 
but the difference is, is there's always is changing in terms of sound and that's also with the other influence that are put in there. When you listen to their songs, none of them are going to really sound the same. They're all going to have a little bit of a different feel to them completely. And in talking with Creature on the podcast as well and even beforehand, he was saying, yeah, I'm really into all this other kind of stuff like funk, metal, hip hop, jazz, blues, and you're going to see a lot of those different styles into the music and when you blend them in there with that hardcore punk sound you're going to get something that is rather diverse in overall sound where you're going to be picking apart certain things and you're going to find so many different things with this hardcore punk sound i think you're going to really like take a look at a couple of song examples take a look at the song i mentioned right away with insult to injury when i first heard the song i characterized it as hardcore punk meets enter sandman it's just the driving force behind it had this more like enter sandman feel just with how it just was paced and melodicized and just drove forward. But it had this hardcore punk sound, especially with Creature's vocals, just rough and out there. And if you watch the music video, it is really powerful as well, just with the message going on there. They did a great job on this track. It's off the team, so we stuck in the Look at a song like Blood and Gold, the second single off of the Ghost in the Shadow album, which comes out on Friday. And why I like this one is because it takes that hardcore punk sound, but it melds it in with like an 80s punk rock style. Think Dead Kennedy. So it's going to have that hardcore punk feel. It's going to be kind of rough, but it also has more of like this like more rough instrumentation style and with a faster pace, well, rather upbeat as well. And it's just a great blend of their hardcore sound mixed with more of a classic punk sound that you saw back in the 70s and 80s. Yeah. Don't Shoot is a very diverse track. When you take a look at it, it is based in hardcore punk, but there is a large funk influence to it, which is done really well because it breaks up the sound a little bit, it gives it more of a flow, and it allows Creature to use his vocal range to just kind of roll right on through it, honestly. It has this great flow to it overall. I really like the song, and I mean, you just take a look at these songs. I love the fact that their sound is based in hardcore punk, but there are so many different branches out and different influences. You're never gonna hear the same thing twice from this band. For the future trajectory of Rebel Manic, they are coming out with their Ghost in the Shadow on this Friday on August 28th. And I'm really looking forward to this one due to the fact that I've heard from Creature that this really isn't going to have a similar feel throughout the whole entire thing. And take a look at Insult to Injury and Blood and Gold. Yeah, you're going to have that hardcore punk bass and a lot of different influences on each song. So you're going to have this very diverse set. I'm really looking forward to having a transcendent experience with this. When it comes to overall growth, Creature has done an incredible job getting the word out about this album, constantly doing podcasts, requests, interviews, constantly doing interviews for publications as well, and just going out and doing it full force. However, I think one thing they need to add, especially unfortunately now where we're in a coronavirus pandemic, is the live shows because the community that they can build with that, especially with their sound and diversity behind those influences, man, it would definitely be an incredible experience. But I think they're doing a good job right now. But once live shows come back, expect this band to really be on the rise. Don't stop, get up. At number four, I have the band Mountainai, and how I found out about them was after doing a podcast with a Belgian band called Suasion, what ended up happening was they ended up just commenting on how much they liked the podcast, and from that I decided, hey, let's go check them out, let's listen to their stuff. These guys from Amsterdam, they have to have something, right? After listening to their debut album, I really liked it, had them on the podcast, we did about two and a half hours, and it was incredibly fun i'm not gonna lie and that's how i really got into this band was through them just commenting on my stuff it works trust me so why do i like mountain eye and it's for a very similar reason why i like rebel matic but in a way that's a little bit more concentrated to what i like so they have this alt metal bass in their sound however when i took a listen to it you really can't put them in a box because when you have that alt metal sound they have a lot of different influences unlike rebel matic where they have influences from so many different places. When it comes to Mountain Eye, they have a lot more influence from more concentrated places within rock and metal subgenres like hard rock, metalcore, just straight up rock music, and even some like more prog rock as well. So you really get a different feel when you go through all these songs, but you know you're gonna stay in that alt metal base and you're not gonna go further out from like metal or Harak. However, the construction on these songs are, is done really well to really make this stand out. <laughs> 
Take a look at a couple examples of songs where the band really stands out, and take a look at a song like Misery, where you're starting off the instrumentation, you're gonna get this more alt metal, breaking Benjamin kind of feel that really kind of sets this more melodic tone to it. However, it also brings in some more hard rock trope as well to kind of pick up the pace as we go along. You get into the pre chorus and they switch up and go all metalcore with it, so you get this faster pace going over it as well. Then you get over to the chorus, and when I heard the chorus, especially the instrumentation, I'm thinking you listen to an album like Declaration by Red, you just get that hard hard rock feel, that consistently good hard rock feel to a track, this really sticks out as well and I love the progressions that go with it. Vocally, you're going to get this mixture between clean and more of a raspy clean, which is more prominent especially in the chorus, and then some unclean vocals as well. It really shows the range and how this band can really take different styles and not only transition them with different vocal patterns, both instrumentation as well. It all depends upon how it's going to flow and they have a lot of tools at their disposal to use with going into the future. Your Masquerade is another song that really does this well within a different style. When you intro the song, it kind of has this like Muse meets Chevelle feel. So it's hard rock, but it's like transcendent style. As it goes into the first verse, you kind of continue that until you get to the chorus. The chorus kind of lives in more of a classic rock kind of feel. So you're like, okay, this is going to be transitioned well. Second verse, holy crap, they go all metalcore on it. It's just like, dude. This is insane. They really can do that transition well. And the vocals also follow suit as well with those transitions. So this is something I really like with the band where they're able to do so many different things with their transitions in different subgenres of rock and metal included in their alt rock style. Not alt rock, alt metal style. It's awesome. Future trajectory for Mountain Eye, in my opinion, it's a little tough for me because since we did the podcast episode, I've seen them comment, like, on a bunch of stuff of mine and with other people as well. But when it comes to a lot of stuff that I've seen from other bands as well, been in contact with other bands, I haven't seen a lot, so it's kind of mysterious to me at this point. However, I did tell the band that I was going to come see them play in their hometown of Amsterdam because I love Amsterdam and or Europe as well, wherever they were gonna be inside Europe at the time I go over there, and that was gonna be September 2020, now it's like May 2021, hopefully. We'll see what happens there, saving up the money for that. But I'm gonna go, I'm a CS fan, I'm gonna enjoy them, and I cannot wait to see them live. They've got a great sound, and when it comes to future music with them, they're kinda keeping it quiet, so they're keeping it interesting. Can you see me trying? At number three, I have the horrorcore band Kill the Blonde, and how I thought about Kill the Blonde was, this was during the, one of our small band Saturday promos on Instagram, we were trying to contact bands. I believe Keanu, their lead singer, ended up reaching out to me about it and asking me to feature one of their songs, take a listen to it, and I did feature the song If Only You Knew, and I really liked it due to the fact that they came at the perfect time for me when I found out about the song due to the fact that... I was so entrenched with my, I had to listen to the Silver Screen by Ice Nine Kills every single day moment, which is like in November of 2019, because I love that album so much. I was like, yeah, it really does fit. I had them on the podcast in February of 2020. I have stayed in contact with them, and I know they're making new music, but they say it's even better than the EP they have out right now. And when that new music comes out, you guys are going to find out about it, because we've been in contact, and we've been working on potentially doing a release thing with them as well to kind of give you guys a little bit more notoriety on their music and when it comes out. So why do I like their style? And why I like their style is because it's based in this thing called horrorcore, which is metalcore with a lot of more horror tropes to it. And again, this is something that really does connect with me well because when I first heard it, this was when I was deeply into Ice Nine Kills in like 2019, 2020, and Motionless and White at the same time as well. So those more deeper, darker, concepts that they were going with also with the style of metalcore that was being used with both bands this really also fits in with kill the blonde as well and it really sticks out incredibly well so when i listen to their sound the instrumentals i really get a feel of like they were built with the classic and most prominent pioneers of metalcore in mind and i'm thinking bands like as i lay down and kill switching age look at a song like want me dead where you have that metalcore feel of it with just these fast paced pounding drums, but the guitar work is up tuned a little bit more to give it a lighter sound. And why I like that is because it gives it like an as I lay dying feel, especially with their metalcore, but with more like a melodic style approach that really does work out well with more of a horror core trope where it's a little bit eerie at times as well. Pretty damn good.
They take a look at a song like Victim Disguise and you're going to get that faster paced kind of style that you would expect from a band like Killswitch Engage, but think the Jesse Leach era, not the Howard Jones era. Think like, you know, 2019. Kill Switch Engage. However, the guitar tunes are tuned in such a way to give it more of this haunting and sinister feel. So it really brings that horrorcore feel all together. And this is something that I'm like, I'm thinking emotionless and white on this one. This is something that really brings out that horror feel to it just in the guitar tune. It was well done. And again, I find this all incredible because they're able to create so many of these horror and sinister tones with just the pacing of their music and with the different tones of their guitar while also keeping this classic metalcore feel to it throughout the whole entire thing. I think it's great and it really reminds me of a lot of stuff that like Ice Nine Kills and Motion Sweater are doing, which when it comes to like a horror kind of style genre within a metalcore sense, I mean, those guys are top dog and kill the blonde to have a sound to be right up there with them. When you listen to the vocals from their lead singer, Keanu, you just have to look at a song like If Only You Knew, and you're going to see the incredible range of motion that he can go with with his vocals and how this all kind of transcends. When you listen to the beginning parts of the song, I mean, he's going to have this more like clean vocal style, but it's going to be a little bit more drawn back and a little bit more like he's trying to hide a secret in a way. And why I like this because it kind of gives you a little bit more of an anxiety feel to the song and it just really builds it up incredibly well. Then you get to when he's going unclean. When he goes unclean, I mean, it's it's hard, it's raspy, it has a little bit of a higher pitch with it. So it kind of reminds me, I'm gonna go with the Ice Nine Kills comparison again. It reminds me of a mixture between Spencer Charnas' unclean vocals and former guitarist and former backup vocalist JD DeBillick's vocals as well, especially unclean. So you kind of get the mixture there. And you, what I really like about that is you get to hear Keanu's angst and anger and pain in those vocals as well. And then when he goes completely clean on the chorus, it's very melodic, it's very drawn out, but it's worked so well to kind of just give that pain and give that more horror kind of style in a different light. It's a little bit more haunting at the same time as well. And you can see how the difference of ranges that he can go with just really match with what the band is trying to do, especially driving a certain sound. It is done well. Looking at future trajectory for Kill the Blonde with right now, you know, again, live shows being canceled and kind of on the shutdown right now, they're not growing in that light. However, I have been in contact with the band about their new music that's coming out rather soon. I'm not sure exactly when, but I'm expecting sometime later in 2020. And in talking to the Keanu, he says that it's going to be even better than what they had on this previous EP, especially better than If Only You Knew. I'm like, Okay, this is incredible if they're saying that because this was really done well and I love how the transitions work with all their different styles of vocals and with how they're able to play off with so many different metalcore styles and create so many different ways to bring out this horror and angst and more conniving sinister sound to it with just different guitar tunes as well. I think they're really good when it comes to writing this style and I can't wait to see what they come up with. I'm really looking forward to this. So coming number two, we have the girls from Girlfriend and Summer GFM. I found out about them from my first batch of ads for Small Band Saturday, and they sent me their whole entire Old Horror EP, which came out earlier in 2019. I liked it so much that even before we featured them, I had them as a guest on a podcast, and I was just doing phone interviews. And I liked them so much that all of a sudden, when I started doing video interviews, they were the second band I video interviewed. It was fantastic. It kind of got me kicked off on the whole entire interview video style with them, and I absolutely loved it from there. In 2020, I was supposed to see the girls perform three times, once in March and twice in July at festivals. Of course, all three got nixed and I was pretty bummed. However, that first one at Cup of Joy in Green Bay that I was going to see them in March, that got rescheduled for middle of July 2020. Did I go to that show? Yeah, I did. I had my Guy Fox mask on, you know, from like here down, you know, just to make sure that I didn't accidentally catch or spread the coronavirus. And after the show, I got to spend time talking with them for about maybe 10 minutes. Got a signed skateboard that I purchased because I love a skateboard. It's hanging up on the wall right over there. And I was amazed by it. I can't wait to get these girls on the podcast again and see them live. So why do I like GFM? And when you look at their sound, I mean, this is something that is incredible. They call it beauty core. And what it reminds me of is take Paramore and take a day to remember and mix them together 
and if you did, you would get GFM. So what I mean by that is, is they're gonna play with more of this certain sound as well, but they're also gonna dabble in so many different sounds as well, especially more of a hardcore sense. So you're gonna get a lot of versatility from the band as well. Let's take a look at a couple songs like I Don't Need Your Fantasy, where this song is built with this more hardcore punk rock style to it, and it really does fit out as well. The, it, the instrument tuning is a little bit more primal at the same time as well, from the drumming and from the guitar work as well. It does work out really well. Take a look at a song like Give Me a Sign where it's going to be a more upbeat kind of fun pop punk style song and I mean they throw cupcakes and they end their shows with this song and it, it really works out incredibly well. And then of course my favorite Never Again where they play with more of like this metal metalcore style as well so that's where that A Day to Remember comparison comes in where they're able to transcend different styles at the same time as well and it hits a lot harder with more down tune style and Man, you can just see the versatility that these girls have going from song to song. They can construct some good stuff. One other thing I like about this band is the use of the vocals because not only are they able to transcend styles with their instruments, but also with the vocals as well. When you listen to them, yes, they can go clean, but they can also go unclean as well and really create this powerful force at the same time as well. Take a look at the three songs I mentioned. Take a look at I Don't Need Your Fantasy, where you're gonna get more of a faster paced kind of song with a little bit more of a vigor behind the clean vocals. Perfect for punk rock. I think Maggie does a great job on this. Give me a sign, you're really gonna get this more drawn out, more classic kind of Haley Williams style, but a lot more intense, I would say, when it comes to the clean vocals. That really does work out well on a pop punk track like that. You take a look at Never Again and you can hear the like harder and just more forceful, unclean vocals that is really incredible to listen to and mix them in with those more elongated but impactful clean vocals. Ooh. Yeah, is it good? One thing I like about GFM is something I call the Skillet Complex. So let me re reference that. GFM, like Skillet, is a band that deals with a lot of Christian values and Christian meanings in their songs. And when I take a look at Skillet for myself, I really don't really get in a lot of Skillet before Comatose. And I think the reason before that was you take a look at those songs before the Comatose album, yes, they're good songs, but they were more forcefully about Christianity and Jesus, so it was a little bit tough for myself to get into. Take a look at After Comatose, it's yes, those Christian values and those Christian meanings are still there, but it's a little bit more abstract where you can connect with them in so many different ways. And when I take a look at GFM, I believe they're on the second half of that skill complex where, yes, the Christian meaning is going to be there. However, it's a little bit more abstract and doesn't directly reference it to where someone like myself who doesn't really get into the direct reference of that stuff can really get into this band incredibly hard. Looking at the future trajectory of the band, they are growing online at an incredible rate. As of right now, when I'm filming this, Instagram, they're right about to break that 11,000 marker. And one of their videos is going viral on TikTok as well. And they're gaining followers by the thousands from that video as well. So they're definitely playing that game. Gary V long game kind of style when it comes to growing online. And I really do like the fact of that. Taking a look at some of this stuff as well, they're really starting to gain a lot of traction on a lot of Christian music charts as well, which is absolutely incredible. However, with the fact that they have that, what I call the skillet complex, especially with more of the second half of the style, they can really use that to kind of get instead of gaining just traction on the Christian charts, use that and also transcend it to more overarching charts and more standard charts like hard rock charts, the modern rock charts, and just overall at the same time as well. They really have a good sound for it as well, and I cannot wait to get these girls back in the podcast in the end of 2020 because they're so much fun to talk with, they're so much fun to uh, interview, and their music is fantastic. So they're my number two pick. Of course, before I pick number one, let's shout out a couple of honorable mentions of bands that are emerging that I do like for one reason or another and I think could really make a lot of waves. So, hit it!
So coming in number one is the band King Collapse out of San Antonio. How I got in contact with them is through the biggest Acerb fan of all time and one of my friends, Miss Kathy Miller. How she ended up getting in contact with the band is because she's friends with them and they're from the same area in San Antonio, Texas. So when I was finding bands for the podcast to start interviewing, she helped me get my first two and King Collapse was the second. So I was nervous, but I'm glad they got on. And then Jonathan Norris, lead singer for King Kingdom Collapse, was my first ever video interview on the Core Progression podcast. Absolutely loved it and I'm so glad I got to do it with them because you can see where the podcast is going today with him, GFM, and then going forward with all the interviews I've done since, especially online where you can watch them on YouTube. In 2020, before everything got shut down, I got to see the band play live in Chicago, Illinois, or just outside of Chicago, Illinois. And it was awesome. I got to meet all of them. I got to just experience their music live and it was just, it was like so damn cool. In May of 2020, when Uprise came out, their latest single, I was able to listen early and I'll talk about how much I liked that later on. However, I mean, taking a look at what it's done for the band now, it's incredible. In July of 2020, they ended up charting on the modern rock charts with that song as an independent band. And for two straight weeks, they were the most played song in Sirius XM Octane. So, <laughs> yeah. So why do I like Kingdom Collapse? And when it comes to their sound, they're based in this more hard rock sound as well as alt metal. Now, when I started the whole entire project, I was really into my base of hard rock and uh, punk rock. However, you know, I added metal core to that as well. But when I take a look at Kingdom Collapse and going forward, they have that hard rock sound, but they're able to use that alt metal bass part as well to kind of bring in some harder sounds at the same time as well and really create this incredibly vigorous sound that can go harder times and go softer times, but really stick with this hard rock alt metal bass. Taking a look at a song like Suffer, where when you listen to this song, you're gonna get a lot of classic hard rock tropes in that really create a harder and more impactful song. We're gonna get down tune guitars and that consistent hard rock style of drumming through it, which I really do like. However, you take a look at something like the pre-chorus of the song and you're going to see more that alternative metal side really shine because the guitars pick up some of the pace and the drums kind of become more primal with a faster pace as well so they kind of match the two overall, especially with the use of the floor time and they create such a smooth transition to it where it's so easy to get into the I want to make you suffer kind of feel of it. It is good. I want you to suffer. One of the big things I like about this band is Jonathan Norris's vocals, and when you take a listen to him, man, I got this connection with Adam Gontier from there as well, where it's a little bit less, you know, more unique, but you can definitely hear the Adam Gontier vocal style in there, and it creates such a great sound. Take a look at a song like Uprise, where it's using that more great hard rock vocal that sounds like it's a little bit distorted at the same time as well, you get this anthemic feel with Uprise, and it absolutely makes the song, it makes that just powerful notion to it. I absolutely love it. On your way to the top, you'll have to get through me. One thing I like about Jonathan Norris's vocals is sometimes he goes with this like almost unclean cell, but it's not really unclean. And take a look at a song like Suffer and you're really gonna feel that in there as well because it just brings up this harder tone to it as well. It just allows him to use so much more emotion at different times as well and just to create a different emotional feel that really matches with a harder style instrumentation backing him and it just creates this great overall sound that really dives deep into it and what i like about that is because it allows the band to try so many different things in that hard rock and alt metal bass and kind of going off from there but my god does this really work out well i'm a big fan of it and it's just going to keep transcending this band going forward and forward and forward So when it comes to future trajectory for the band and in my vision, what I'm seeing, I mean, this is definitely something where I see it the most clear. And right now they're an independent band, but especially after the popularity that Uprise had, especially with the charting and being very popular at Sirius XM Octane in the midst of a pandemic, here's what I see happening. After the end of this pandemic, this independent band will no longer be an independent band. They may get signed by a mid-tier label or a top-tier label. I have no idea where they're going to go, but I know they're going to be signed because you can definitely see the upward trajectory of this band. Then, when it comes to the return of live music, yeah, I definitely see these guys touring America. But not in the way that they're used to. They're used to touring America being kind of like headliners in smaller venues. I don't see them being the headliners anymore, but I see them being a part of a big tour 
and being more of an opener or like a middle band. And I mean, let me think of some bands that could definitely use their sound as a perfect opener. Uh, Breaking Benjamin is the perfect one, I think, for this. I think they would go great with Breaking Benjamin, with them being the opener for them, and it would just be absolutely fantastic. I mean, the breakout party is ready to happen, and it's going to happen. It's all a matter of when. So that's going to be it for me, guys. Thank you for watching the video of me detailing my top five emerging bands in the scene today. There are so many others that I would love for you to listen to as well. And if you really want to get to know a lot of them, take a look at the Core Progression Podcast Rundown list, and you'll be able to find different bands that you're definitely going to want to get in tune with. So please, please, please listen to these bands, get to know them, and get those bragging rights from your friends before they get big. And that's going to be it for me, guys. Thank you for watching. This is Kevin from the My Song of the Rock 2008 YouTube channel. It's getting dark, as you can see. This video is kind of like darkening as it goes on. Ooh, awesome. Get the hat flip. See ya!